ready to start then? We are ready to roll. Okay. Hello and welcome everybody to Coffee and Curtains. Uh, this week, our, uh, our program is on sliding glass doors. My name is Debbie Hall and I'm from Designer Draperies. We've, we are in the Philadelphia and New Jersey area and we've been in business for over 25 years. Always fun to teach people, educate you on different uh, topics in the window treatment industry. And my partner in crime, it's always fun to be able to talk with her about window treatments too. So, Rebecca. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rebecca Munster, and I'm really excited because I didn't get to be with you guys last time, and I really missed it. So happy to to be back this week. Um, and uh, I own a company called Rebecca Munster Designs. We are in the D.C. area. Um, we specialize in window treatments, soft furnishings, and upholstery. And I'm super excited about today's topic. I was telling Debbie, I've got like five of these coming up uh, with clients. So um, sliding doors are always um, somewhat of a challenge for a couple different reasons that I'm sure we'll cover all of them in great detail <laughs> as we delve in to, to our, our slides here. Oops. There we go. I always hit that button wrong. All right. So to start off, there's, there's a few different types of sliders and they all do the same thing. They slide, right? So it's not as if like, um, and there's not a million of them, but you know, there are the kinds, they really either slide from the middle. So like this one slides from the middle. And I think nowadays, sometimes Debbie, don't they like, they'll stack out like several, you can almost get a whole oh, wall. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and it gives such a nice wide open space. I mean, it's, it's like uh, a huge glass wall. I've got yeah. a lot of clients like that. And, and actually I'm looking forward to having that in my house, probably within the next three to five years. Yeah. It lets in so much light. It's so pretty. Um, then this one, I put it in here. It really is just a regular slider, but they do make different ones that have like, make them look a little bit more like a French door, but they still slide. So, um, mm -hmm. and then you have your standard slider that goes from right to left, um, or left to right, depending on <laughs> where the slider is and how you have it installed. So, um, we will tackle French doors next, uh, in our next one. So we'll get into the details of that. Um, Things to consider when we're talking about sliding glass doors. Um, obviously, they're big, right, Debbie? So like light it's, control, privacy can become a big issue because they're so big. So depending on where they are in your house, you may feel like you're in a little bit of a fishbowl. And, you know, the other thing is when you've got a big door like that to cover it, it is, it is expensive. It's so you want to make sure when you're doing it the first time that you're doing it right, that you love it, that it's done exactly the way you want it to be done. Um, because you're going to want something like that around for a long time. Yeah. But, but light and privacy are, are two huge things. Uh, the other oh, yeah. thing is the design and style of the room. You know, what are you looking to accomplish in that room? How do you want it to look? Mm -hmm. uh, and which, which, which way the doors open? I mean, that is a huge one. How many times mm -hmm. have you done this, Rebecca? You know, you've designed everything. You get back to the office and you think, oh, darn, which way did that door open? Right. Because that determines where you're going to either put a draw cord or if it's a one-way draw, which way it's going to be stacking. Yeah, um, and I think as a general rule, and I've, I'm about to break this rule. So again, it's just a general <laughs> rule. Um, but you know, if they open from the middle, then whatever we're doing, I, you generally want to do a split draw, right? So that it, it the um, window treatment you're using also opens from the middle. If it opens from the left, then you want to go that way. So, you know, understanding um, which way the doors open and thinking about that um, is definitely part of the design process that Debbie and I go through. Another big thing is how much space do you have? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you've got a door that's opening to the right and there's really very little space on that right for all that fabric to stack up, you might want to do a split draw. These are all different things mm -hmm. that, that we talk about. And you have to think when fabric stacks back, when you've got it covering an entire sliding glass door, when the fabric stacks back, you've got the pleats, you've got the rings. So 
it can only go so tight. And on a slider, I mean, you're looking at about sometimes uh, about like a 26 to 30 inch stack a lot of times. So we really have to make sure that you've got the room because I'm sure that everybody is like I am. You want to have as much of your door showing as possible, you yeah. know, as much light coming in. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thinking about how much space you've got really matters because you paid extra for all that extra light and window, right? <laughs> you put yep. that slider in for a reason. You want to make sure that, that you can get the most out of it. Um, and then how much and how that door is used is another big one because if it's a door that you've kind of got furniture sitting in front of and nobody ever goes in and out that door, then we can play around a little bit more. We don't have to be as, as conscientious about certain things, but if it's a door that like, you know, especially this time of the year, it's your deck, you're grilling, you're going to be going in and out that door a lot. We want to make sure we've got a solution that allows you to go in and out a lot without it being kind of a painful process. <laughs> you also have a pool. You've got kids. I get that all the time. Well, I've got kids. It, you know, what's going to happen? But the other thing that you have to think about on a sliding glass door is the top part of the sliding glass door. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing something like, uh, let's say you don't want to do panels, but you want to have a valance, you have to make sure that you've got room for that balance for it to be proportionate but you don't want it coming down so that you're hitting your head on it so <laughs> every you've time you've got to make up. sure <laughs> yeah you've got to make sure i can't tell you how i mean many i would never hit my head on anything but <laughs> <laughs> for some people that's a really big issue <laughs> you know how many times i have to say to a client how tall is your husband? Yeah. Because we'll do something and, you know, we'll be talking about something and I'm like, no, we've got to go up higher. And they're like, no, it's fine for me. And I'm like, yeah, but how tall is your husband? Right. You know, how tall is your company? And the one woman, her, you know, her son is six, five going yeah. in and out. And I'm like, okay, we can't have anything hanging down. Right. You know, that's right. not going to make sense. Um, yeah. Real quick, Maria, welcome. I see that you're joining us. Linda, welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and Tina and Kelly, I said hello to you earlier. And we said hello to Barb as well. Yeah. So great. I'm sorry. Everybody. Keep going. No, I just that's great. And I think one more thing about doors, and that this is, again, not a showstopper, but just to think about, you know, when you open them, if you've got fabric, it'll get kind of sometimes sucked outside a little bit, right? You know, it can, but I got to tell you, three boys, I've uh -huh. always had panels on my slider on both sides, uh -huh. and I've never had an issue with that. Okay. Good. Never. But Good. in this picture right here that you all see on the PowerPoint, you see that, that vent right yeah. there? That's something else that we always have to keep in mind. If you've got a vent there, if we're doing panels or something like that, that vent, when that vent is open, it's going to blow right in between your fabric and lining and it can separate it. Yeah. So we either want to do a, a vent diverter or something, uh, you know, to address that issue as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So now we're going to walk through, there are several different solutions for sliders. And I think this is one that a lot of homeowners get stuck on because they kind of think there's just one or two and we've got to do curtains. And a lot of times if you've gone out and just bought store-bought curtains with grommets, dragging them back and forth on that rod is painful because by the way, grommets were never designed to be open and closed. They're supposed to be decorative. So finding um, the right solutions can sometimes feel challenging. And there actually are several. And I think you'll be surprised today as we kind of walk through this, how many different solutions there are for um, sliders. But one of them is a woven wood solution. And this particular brand is called Naverte. Um, but they're really beautiful and they look like curtains when they're hanging, but they're actually a woven wood. So in like this picture, if you've got other woven woods in your room and you want to keep consistent, um, and they slide open so smoothly, don't they, Debbie? Oh, with a baton draw you can use, mm -hmm. or they also have almost like a handle that you can use to mm -hmm. open and close. But what I love about it is how beautiful they basically it's a woven wood turned vertically so mm -hmm. the ones on the window are horizontal the ones on the door are vertical and 
it just really gives you an, a nice uh, continuous flow through the room because you've got the windows oh. coordinating with the door. Yep. So it's really, uh, this, is, this is one of the jobs that I did. And uh, beautiful home. The woven woods were the perfect, uh, you know, the perfect answer for this. And then we pulled it over again on the sliding glass door. And the clients love it. It's, it's just something different. It's not yeah. fabric. Uh, and that woven wood is pulling in a little bit of the outdoorsy look mm -hmm. because it's so organic. Yeah. And so the organic look was perfect in with uh, this client's furnishings and everything as well. Now, and then in this case, it's they're unlined, but you can also line them too. So right, right. Um, uh, if this is perfect here, because I'm going to imagine it's not a bedroom. Nobody's like naked. Exactly. In the of the right. Room. So <laughs> it just gives them nice light filtering, right? Exactly. And then, but if you were going to put it in a bedroom or something like that, you absolutely have the option to to line those. Right. Um, and I like to, one of the things I like about it is that you don't have to do it on um, a drapery rod like this. You can have it sort of in a more like a cassette, almost like a vertical would, would come, right? Uh -huh. But um, you, I like it on the rod because it feels, it just adds even more to the room, I think. And, and it feels like drapery. And then you can also throw it up on rings you know, yeah. a rod with rings. So again, that's just another option. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we could always put a valance over it if we wanted to, uh, you know, have a cleaner look up top without seeing, uh, you know, a rod, rings, anything like that. Right, right. And I think just like we would talk about with drapery, obviously this door opens here from that right side to the left. So that's the way we decided, you decided to have the Averte draw, um, but you can do a split draw. So it would open in the middle if the door was different and it made more sense to do that, right? And we could have done a split draw on this, on this one also, but we would have had to go further out on the wall. Yeah. Uh, on, on the right hand side so that it wasn't in the way. And as you can see, there's not a lot of room there. It was already, you know, they already had the bar cart there. So opening it to the left, the way the sliding glass door goes was perfect for that option. Yeah, that's nice. Very nice. Oops. All right, another um, option are shades and really anything that kind of functions like a roller shade sort of fits into this category. As you can see here, that's a slider and this is a slider and they put big giant um, roller shades. This is a company that I use often out of Baltimore and um, we've done, they can do really, really big <laughs> roller shades, but you could also, if you wanted to, and this is something else to think about when you're doing roller shades, is you could do one that fits here on this side and one that lines up with that piece. And that way then you could keep these sides down and just open the side where people are going to go in and out. You know, you can, there's lots of different ways you can kind of slice and dice that to make a roller shade work. Um, and I think, and Debbie, you probably find, you know, I, my clients that um, have a more like modern, they don't want a lot of extra stuff around. They tend to yes. like to use the roller shade because it's just up out of the way, like it never existed during the day and they can bring it down at night um, when they're Absolutely. And then what you were saying about having like maybe two roller shades mm -hmm. on, on it. A lot of my clients that have dogs, you know, they're letting them in and out. And so they want to keep the one side down, keep the sun out, but then they'll raise the other one so that they can let the dog in and out so that the kids can run in and out. Mm -hmm. So again, you can still doing it this way. You can still keep one down, protect, you know, have a little bit, a little bit of privacy, but also the sun control. Yeah. But then as you can see on these roller shades, they go up into a cassette, which is a beautiful look. And so when these are up, they're completely gone. You don't have anything hanging on the sides at all. Um, and I've got a lot of clients that really do like that look. Yeah, yeah. I think this, this is one, a solar shade, right? Uh, this this was a sol is a solar shade, and that's just in a cassette. And it's just very basic. Uh, right now it's down just a tiny bit, but it could be all the way up in that cassette. 
excuse me, cassette or all the way down. Uh, this, this was just one part of this kitchen. Uh, you know, it's, it's still in the process of being completed, yeah. but uh, the roller shade was the start to give the privacy and the sun control. Yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, it's just such a, when it's up in that cassette like that, it's just a really nice, clean lined, easy look, mm -hmm. right? It's, there's nothing yep. offensive about that. And I think too, when I'm trying to, talking with clients, because here they've put one, trying to understand whether we should do one or two, there's, there's a lot, we put a lot of thought into like, well, when are you in and out of that door all the time? And is it times of the day where you like, this is a solar shade. So if they get really strong afternoon sun, maybe they want it closed on this side sometimes, but they've got, they know their kids are going to be running in and out to the backyard. Or if they're like, ah, that's not really ever the problem for us, right? We don't use that door a lot. That's the other door we use the most. Well, then you could do a single. So I think you just kind of working through those different options, but there's always a way to solve the problem. So, right. <laughs> These are so pretty. Okay, so these are pirouettes that are on this door. And we had talked about pirouettes before, but it's, it's obviously a horizontal shading system. And this client also, to the, what you can't see is to the left of this door is a fireplace. And then we've got the same window on the other side with the fireplace very close again. This is at the shore. They just wanted it light and airy, but they do need the protection uh, for sun and also privacy in the front in the evening. Mm -hmm. So it was a perfect option. And then you can't see because the picture turned out a little dark, but it goes up into a cassette and then you can still see, well, on the right hand side where the yeah, shot, you can, you, you can see the pretty uh, molding around yeah. the window. That's really nice how you place that. Um, the head rail like really perfectly on there so you could still take advantage of that pretty molding on the top. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. All right. Another solution are sliding panels. So often it's like solar shade material or roller shade material. I think sometimes um, woven woods also come um, in sliding panels um, and Basically, if there are individual panels here that slide and to open and close. Again, it's a little bit more of a contemporary modern look. Um, if you're looking for a cleaner line, um, you want to keep, you don't have a lot of room like this. There wouldn't be room to have drapes over on the side. So this really covers the, the window um, and then allows you to pull those back and forth. I think I've got one more picture in here. And th that was a really contemporary one. This one's a little less contemporary and more traditional with um, a top treatment on it. But you can see in this one, that door opens in the middle. So they did a mid they did a center draw on those panels. Um, and the, the panels themselves also can vary in, in width. So, so with the panel track system, you've got a couple of things. Like Rebecca said, you can do it in, it's, you, you most commonly see it in a roller shade fabric or a solar shade fabric, mm -hmm. but you can do it in an actual fabric. You can choose a fabric and have it, have it made also in, let's just say, and you would never do this, but to match that valance up there, you could actually do it in a regular fabric as well. Yeah. The panel track system, it's, it's basically got stability at the bottom so that it hangs nice and taut. And when the, to me, kind of the drawback when it opens and uh, when you open it, it stacks, but it doesn't stack tight. So the panels overlap each other. So it comes out sometimes a little bit further into the door. So you want to make sure that when you're able, you can go off the door a little bit more so that when it's stacking, you still yeah. have plenty of light coming through. Yeah, because you will, like on the first picture, you will get, even when this is all the way open, it's it's going to cover up some of that that glass. Right, and you see how the, the very clean top head rail, yeah. uh, most panel track systems come with a very clean, sleek head rail up top, which is very nice. Yes. All right, next up, cellular shades. <laughs> so um, ju just like we talked about with the woven woods where these are kind of horizontal and then vertical, the, the cellular shade 
for the sliders works that same way. So they just take that cellular shade material and turn it on end and do the same thing on here that you can do with the cellular shade. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but you see here and here. So with the cellular shade, it can kind of move both ways, you know, almost like our top down, bottom up cellular shades, right? We can, we can move that from either side. So one of the benefits of this is that it stacks so tight. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking like um, one to two inches if mm -hmm. you have it opened all the way up. So it's really sleek when you are really limited with any space. It stacks nice and snug for you. Um, for, drawbacks for me is because it's, it's the um, honeycomb, it's a little busier looking. Uh, and well, I love fabric. So, you know, right. I'm going to bring in the softness of fabric whenever I can. <laughs> But I think this picture gets to exactly what you're saying, which was one of the benefits that, I mean, even with as big as this slider is, um, that will close up to like tiny, almost yes. nothing there on the side. Yep. So if you're lo really looking for clean aesthetic and most of the time when you're there, it's going to be open, um, that, you know, that's a decent, and you've already got cellulars, it's a good solution. Right, because then it coordinates with everything else in the room. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've done uh, sliders in kitchens mm -hmm. where it, the, t the space is just so tight. Yeah. You don't have room to do draperies or anything like that. Uh, they don't want to do something coming down from the top because you know that can be... Right. That has yeah. Its, its, yeah. its drawbacks also. Right. Um, this opens just like your slider does. Yeah. And, so, they, and it's light. So it opens so easy. So even if you did, you're right, Debbie, in a busy space, a solution like this is not a bad one at all because you can just pull that back, pull the door back, go outside, yep. come back. And it's not, it's not as um, big an ordeal <laughs> to get right. in and out of that busy door if, if you need right. to. Yep. Um, so our next, uh, T types of solutions would be verticals and shear verticals. And I think in most cases, a lot of people are moving away from and have been moving away from just your standard verticals. But these shear verticals um, are a nice take on the vertical shade. Don't you think so, Debbie? Well, yes, because what you're looking at is uh, depending on which type we're, you know, we're going with, uh, one type is you've got almost like a, a thin fabric vein with mm -hmm. the shear wrapping around it. So it, it gives you the ability to have a shear where you've got, um, you've still got, uh, you can well, still you, see you through. Can, yeah. You don't have complete privacy. That's what I'm trying right. to say. Well, and you it really is the nice thing because if you were just to put shears on here, then you've got shears, right? So it right. light filters, but you never get full privacy at night when you have the lights on in your house, people will see straight in. With this, I can have that look and feel of the shear. I can see out during the day. Mm -hmm. And then at night I can twist it closed and it right. does what a vertical does, right? And it closes yep. together and now I've got privacy. Um, I, think, I think one of the things that's hard about verticals um, is that they are so hard and they're harsh, right? And, and that's one of the reasons people hate them. Yes. yes. It, it's mm -hmm. very, it's a hard, it's a hard feel. And these just soften it up. Um, when they're open, most people don't even realize that it's a vertical inside there. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, it's funny. You said that most people are going away from verticals, but remember I'm by the shore. Yeah. And so there's a lot of people, verticals do still have a place. Yes. In the window treatment world, because they have a function that nothing else has. And that's that you can adjust your privacy mm -hmm. on your doors. Uh, you can adjust the light and everything. Yeah. Now, on this, uh, this, these two pictures on the left is a vertical that a client had. Uh -huh. And on the right, we put a sheer wrap on uh -huh. that vertical. So we utilized the exact same verticals, uh, veins, the same head rail, the shear is wrapped around it. And there's a pocket at the bottom that each vein goes into and it snaps up top. And there you've got 
your your diffused yeah, yeah. you know the diffused light you can open it you can close it you can turn the veins um you can take it off and wash it yeah so that is going to be your most cost effective way of doing a shear with a vein yeah. uh, you know a vertical shear with a vein that's going to be the most cost effective and I've got to tell you, I've got clients where they wanted shears, but the light just glares in mm -hmm. so badly onto their wood floors. Everything was, um, everything was fading Fading, yeah. and this was the perfect option for them. Yeah. So we put them on, they absolutely loved them, uh, that, you know, they could close it during the day, get no light in whatsoever. And it really, it did the trick. So uh, awesome. definitely an option to look at. Yeah. And they stack tight also, and they don't yeah. clang. They don't right. clang when they've got the shears on. When they've them. got the shears in them, they that it like softens the noise. Yep. Um, yep. Another option are shutters. So, you know, we really can make shutters into do just about anything we need and want it to do. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, there are, um, a couple different ways you can do them. So you can do a bifold. I don't know if you guys can see here, but, and you can kind of see it there, um, where the two panels close on top of each other. So like a bifold, close it, close a door or whatever. You may even mm -hmm. have some shutters on your windows that do the bifold thing. Um, the bifold 180, so that the only difference about that is it lets you take it all the way back to the wall. Um, so the nice thing about the bifolds is you can open, close everything, right? Right. Um, but you know, I find more clients go for the bypass over yes. the bifold. Yeah. Um, you know, just, I, I think it's the, the bypass, I think gives a cleaner look and the bypass yeah. works just like a shutter does, or just like your sliding glass door does. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got one that goes over the other. The drawback is that you've always got that one, you know, your, your, the one side of your slider is always going to be covered. Yeah. Uh, but you can slide the other one over and then you can turn the veins and you can see all the way out with when both of them are stacked. You can also turn the veins when it's closed. You can have closed veins. You can have open veins. Mm -hmm. You can have it slid over to the side, closed veins and open veins also. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are a shutter person, you've got shutters in your house, like they, these work, they're great. It, I think what you said, unless you do the bifold, you'll never get that fully opened. So it's right. just something to think about if you really like it fully open sometimes. Yeah. And, and the bifold 180 is a great option if you've got enough room on your walls so that so, you've got everything yeah. completely open. I don't like it when they're sticking out yeah. per se, but when yeah. they can lay flat, I think that's, that that's is fantastic. Nice. That is nice. All right. So, I mean, nobody here should be shocked that Debbie and I want to talk about drapery <laughs> over, <laughs> over sliders because, you know, we kind of like drapery <laughs> and those big windows and all that fabric. I mean, who doesn't drool over all that, right? <laughs> and, and, all right. And, and the last, uh, the, the last show that we did, uh, what, three weeks ago, we talked all about hardware. Yeah. So that all goes with all these draperies that you see. Uh, there's, uh, there's just hundreds of options of different hardware options yeah. that you would have for this. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a big slider. This actually is the um, home where you step down like three or four steps down into this family room. Um, so it's got really, really tall ceilings. Um, she loves the light that comes in here. Um, this is actually one where I went again. So the door actually opens from over here, but the way this room was like set up and the seating and everything, it was going to feel out of balance if we had done um, all of the drapes to one side or the other. Like we felt just that door is centered on that wall. It just oh, needed yeah. the balance. <laughs> it oh, yeah. needed could the you, balance. Could now, you imagine all the fabric being like all over on the side. one side, yeah. you know, and oh, that would just be so heavy. Uh, we might have been able to get away with it if this sofa wasn't here and we could do it back to this side because you've got the 
built-ins on the other side. That's probably the only way we could have gotten away with it, but the way the furniture was and stuff, it just made more sense for us to do this uh, split draw. A um, couple of just little things about this. Obviously, this is a very light colored fabric and her family goes in and out that door a lot. So we did hide behind here a little uh, medallion hold back so that we could just, so when everybody's kind of coming in and out in the evening hours in the summer, you could just put that fabric back there and it at least keeps it a little bit out of the way so that they're not rubbing barbecue fingers and <laughs> that's a nice idea but you know what i want to point out that i really love what? is that you pleated this whole thing to pattern yeah and it looks amazing pleated to the pattern Thank where you. you've got the same you know you've got the same thing on each pleat that looks fabulous yeah. thank you um and we also i we did um especially when they're this big we did the cord draw just it makes opening and closing that so much so much easier um, but it does, but, but the baton draw, now that that's out, yeah. has, has really taken over in popularity. Yeah. And I'm finding that most of my clients, when they can do a baton draw, they're doing it. Yeah. Because think of the one option that you have. Um, well, you can keep, with a baton draw, you can keep the left side closed and just open right. the right side. Yeah, Whereas right. when you've got a traverse rod, uh, you know, a cord, a cord draw, you can't do that. That's and good. so I'm finding that I've got a lot more clients that really yeah. are, uh, you know, enjoying yeah. the baton yeah. draw. Yeah, yeah, the baton draw is super nice. This ceiling gets really high, so I don't think there was any, I mean, I mean sometimes it's just too high for me because I'm five. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this one would have been too high for everybody in the family, so. Well, um, but you're right, that does, the baton draw does give you a lot of flexibility. The other, go back, wait, one oh. more. Go back Sorry. to your picture one more time. <laughs> okay, keep in mind, Rebecca said that you have to step down into this room a couple of steps. If she would have done these draperies right at the top of the uh, sliding glass door, mm -hmm. when you would be looking into that room at a higher level, mm -hmm. those draperies would look like they would belong in a little hobbit house because they would look so low it would really cut the room off. So yeah. that's why that's why they were raised. I'm assuming that's why they were raised. Yeah. That's the right way to do it. Absolutely. Um, and with the built-in over here that comes all the way up to the ceiling, it just would have felt really odd to have that. And you're right, when you're up, because this is actually open up here and the kitchen sits up higher, like you would be looking down on top of the drapery rod if, if we didn't do that. Yep, right. absolutely. All right, now for this prettiness. <laughs> oh, this this is and actually this is these are not sliders. Um, full disclosure, I just wanted to point that out, but this would work perfectly on sliders. This is actually a sunroom and it's and it's in a U shape. And actually our next uh I'll, I'll be showing more of the more of this house uh in two weeks at our next coffee and curtains. But this room is a U-shaped room. So you had a window on the left, one all the way across the back, and a window on the right. They, this is at the beach, and they, as you can see, they've got a beautiful view. A view, yeah. Um, and, and actually that extends all the way over where I've got it covered, you know, on the right-hand side, but the uh -huh. whole thing is view. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to get we wanted to bring in the softness, the white, the fabric, the beauty, but we also wanted to have the windows as open as possible. And so if you look at the picture, well, the picture on the left shows you that our left window opened all the way to the left. Then the right window was a center draw. So it Oops. opened to the left and the right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look over on the right picture, you'll see a dark line right in there. And that was all the wall that there was. Ah. So on the, on the left window, we would pull it to the right and then the right window, pull it to the left so that both would cover that area. Nice. I should have actually put in the third picture showing. <laughs> um, and, and then we had a window on the other side that we just opened to the right. So we, we had 
two one-way draws and two center openings. Mm -hmm. And it all, because we were able to break it up, we were able to get it to stack nicely and stack yeah. tight so that she could see everything. That's really cool. That looks great. I love that. And we have to sometimes get really creative with those center draws and one-way draws. Right now I'm doing a couple of them where we're doing a center draw in the middle and then a one-way right and a one-way left um, yep. so that we can parse out that fabric <laughs> where we need to. <laughs> well, and I'm going to tell you a, the difficult thing about this room, the, mm -hmm. besides it being a U-shape, so everything had to be measured that way. If you look at the left and you look up where the, um, where the, where the molding is for the mm -hmm. window, and then you've got crown molding that comes down. Yeah. So I had all of like, uh, I think I had like one and three quarters inches. Oh, wow. It, no, I take that back two inches to squeeze the Bracket. brackets in and to get the fabric tight enough up so that it's covering uh, the window molding. Wow. So it was, believe me, a lot of thought went into this. A job. lot of engineering. A lot. <laughs> a, a lot of headaches, a lot of worry. Um, but, well, you know, all beautiful. of it. <laughs> yeah, when you, when, when you put all that thought into it, it always turns out looking beautiful. Yep. Yep. I like this one. It's so pretty, Debbie. Yeah, this, this one. Uh, okay, so she has a big a huge dog. I forget the name of them right now, but the great big ones. Great Dane. Great Dane. Yeah. Great big dog. And so the dog goes in and out all the time, but we really wanted uh, the, the door opens to the left. And in that room, we really needed it to be symmetrical. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we came off, off the doors so that the stack is, we could even pull that stack back tighter. Okay. Uh, I just had it that way for the picture, but we mm. could, we could pull that stack back a good eight inches on each good. side. Yeah. Yeah. And get it much tighter. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, it, this one was a baton draw. Mm -hmm. And so often what she does is she leaves the one side closed, opens that's the other side so the dog can get in and out very easily. And nice. of course, fabric, you can coordinate with yeah. your other treatments as well. I love that. With the matching Roman shade. It's really mm -hmm. So this is at one of the uh, one of the beach homes that I work at, uh, and I I actually did this home with uh, one of the designers, uh, Linda Rabino from Simply Elegant. Uh, this was her client, and she was going with blue, and this fabric is just so beautiful. Really I mean, it's it's it. it's actually. Uh, a linen-y, very, it's a very light fabric. Mm -hmm. We kept it clean. We didn't want any rings on the poles. And actually, if you would flip-flop these two windows, the kitchen is on the right okay. and open to the right. The living room was on the left and opened to the left. You know, so they opened yeah. with their sliding doors uh, yeah. the way the doors did. And yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it just... It's very really it, it, beautiful room and they're gorgeous when they're closed too. Yeah. Yeah. Adding a print like that on a big door just it makes such a statement in the room. That's really beautiful. This room, uh, this client, you can't tell, but there's actually a uh, shade. There's a cassette ah, and a yes. shade that comes down. And when she bought this home, this is the same house actually as the prior pictures. When she bought the home, the shade was there. Oh. Uh, they need complete blackout. And the shade wasn't giving the complete blackout. So these draperies are actually blackout lined. Nice. So, that when, so that they can close them and get the complete blackout. And then that shade is just so that they can bring it down when the sun is shining in and get some diffused light. Nice. Nice. That's great. It's always, I, I think it's good to see and know too, that even on a slider, you can layer and still right. use the concepts behind layering that allow you to have different options. Yes. Yep. 
All right, top treatment. So sometimes we don't need to block the door or maybe if we've done it with a roller shade or some type of shade, but we still want some softness in the room. We just weren't looking for voluminous amounts of fabric like we get from drapery, right? <laughs> a top treatment is a really nice option. Well, before we go on to this one, I want to tell you, I want the sliding doors in that picture. I know, right? In the prior picture. Those are amazing. I, I would like those. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with this client, we were working, uh, we had a, a family room that led straight into a kitchen, open concept. Uh, so we had a bay window on the left, then we moved on to the slider, and then you see we've got the windows going down. Oops, now, sorry. the windows, that's all right. <laughs> they, they go on to a beautiful pool. And oh, they have yeah, plenty of, gorgeous. yeah, and they've got plenty of privacy. So we did not end up doing shades on the actual sliders, okay. but we did underneath on the windows, we've got beautiful roller shades that can come down uh, to give them the sun control that they need. That's great. All right. So this is, this is actually just a faux Roman shade um, balance at the top. Um, this particular slider actually has those built-in blinds in it. And it was like that when the, my client bought their home and moved in. So we had put real uh, Roman shades in this fabric um, on the other side of this room, because this is an open kitchen into a family room area. So she has two windows on that side. And we just, it, this, there's actually some texture in this fabric, but we went pretty neutral. It's a small space. We didn't want to overwhelm it with too much pattern. She had some pretty cool things coming in in her sofa. Um, and we just liked having the balance of having some softness over here, because it's such a hard part of the house with the kitchen and the big sliders. Um, and it coordinated so well with what we had done in the family room right across the way. So, was, so this is one of those tight rooms that I'm talking, you know, tight areas. Mm -hmm. When we were talking about uh, the honeycomb that's turned on the side and has that tight, tight stack, that would have been like, you know, something, uh, this would be a, a, a type, the type of room that I would put that on. Right. Um, but they, they had the shades inside the windows and I love how you just softened it. Is yeah. that on the left? Is that a barn door? The, yeah, uh, that's their pantry. So yeah, that is a barn door okay. that goes into their pantry. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. This was, okay. I don't know if you can tell, but we've got verticals on the left here. This client, they, they had their verticals, loved their verticals, wanted them. Uh, when they moved in, and actually when they had me come to the house, the verticals were in between the door and the transom. And oh, they hung down here. They hung down there. Okay. And it just cut the room off so mm -hmm. much. Uh, so when we went back and redid, the, uh, redid that window, I said to them, just trust me, just raise it up yep. so, that, so that you've got the height. You'll still see the transom, but you're not going to have it cut off. So when everything is closed, that it gives a very finished, complete look. It's not choppy. Yeah. And when when this was done, they <laughs> they called me back for like three more rooms. They're like, "You were right. You really, you know, you really knew what you were talking about." Know, Which, you know, I think not that we're here today to talk about transoms, but transoms are a challenge from that perspective because. Yeah you know, people buy them because they like them and they spend extra money on them. And then there's this struggle between where do I then put my window treatments and you, going underneath the transoms can often make the room feel shorter. It just, yes. it just does. Yeah, um, it just, and sometimes, I mean, if you've got 12 foot ceilings and you go under the transom, well, that's probably fine, right? Right. Right. But when you've got like an eight or a nine foot nine. ceiling and you go under the transom, it just, it brings your whole ceiling down mm -hmm. and really chops up the room. It doesn't make yeah. it a, as grand of a room as it could be. Yeah. Yeah. This is really pretty. And I like, you were able to still like salvage some light from the transoms and the beauty of the transoms. Um, yeah. And, and, and I think um, when we talked about verticals and we talked about how, 
flexible they are, meaning they, they function in so many different ways. I mean, this is a perfect example. You don't even hardly notice it's there when it's open because it's stacked so tight. Right. Um, and then you've got all that flexibility to really direct the light the way you want to or have full privacy. It's and so the verticals that we put on this window were the fabric verticals. So they don't have the clanging and stuff like that. Right. It just, it, so it gives a softer look. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you look, you see how they, they have that soffit where the probably a header running across. Yeah. yeah. Now picture that and then verticals all the way low yeah. under that transom. I mean, it just, yeah, you broke so the choppy. line of sight, you gave it consistency and yeah. that looks really good. Um, this is just a pretty box pleat balance. And again, just like, just like, um, some of the other ones we looked at before, we did not have anything underneath this. They've got a screened in porch out there. So light is not a big issue other than they love all the natural light that does come in, but they don't ever have, um, times of the day where it's blinding them on that window. And, um, they, they did not have privacy concerns. They've got all woods back there. So we just added a fun little valance, box pleat balance. She loves color. So she wanted to get some more color in her brand new kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, you can probably see some of the green down there on the leg. We pulled some of the green in up here. Um, and she has this fun picture that's got a lot of red in it. So we were able to pull in all those fun colors. And it really is just decorative, but it really softens that big slider in that kitchen. And it's nice and tailored. It's just a nice, clean look. Yep. Uh, it's not overwhelming yeah. on the door. I mean, it's it's really, it's very nice. One of the difficult things on a door when you're doing a valance is if there is a scallop, mm -hmm. you're going to see like this. Is, anytime you've got a valance that's straight at the bottom, it's easier. Because mm -hmm. when you've got a scallop, then you're gonna, going to start seeing, uh, you know, the, the uh, molding on the doors. And right. so I always like when, when I can do a straight bottom as opposed to a scallop. I just feel like it gives it a cleaner look. Yeah. I mean, that's funny you said that because I actually, there were, uh, there was a balance up here before I did this one for her and it had scallops at the bottom. And I think in order to not see the molding at the top, they had to hang it low enough that it yes. then was too low. So she didn't yep. want scallops this time so that we could hang it high enough that everybody could walk under it without hitting their heads, but you also weren't seeing the molding like you were talking about. Right. Oops, there, I did that again. Oh, well, we were at the end, so. We were at the, oh, okay. So there we then go. the last one is, is, uh, is saying thank you to everybody for joining us and in two weeks we are now the second and fourth monday of each month yep.